Hello everybody and welcome back to m and Games. Now I'm doing the second update on my Canyon Valley um, amusement park which maybe isn't the best name for it now because I've added a fair amount of water to it <laughs> um, and I think I said that before um, but kind of my go-to in this game is if I'm stuck somewhere add water. Um, so what I'm gonna do on this episode is I'm gonna kind of walk you through what I've done. Um, we've made three new coasters um, and I'm going to kind of show you my plan because as you see right now, I'm at a hundred percent. And so what I've done is I've kind of, um, placed some stuff down that I know once I get back to a hundred percent that I'll probably want to kind of add for some realism at the end, just kind of add more trees and stuff and cars in the parking lot. So what I've done, um, um, so if you see this, all these cars right here. I tried to color them different. Um, I'm going to be able to place them in the parking lot. I've also attached it to this group right here. Because that, along with all these trees over here, is exactly 4,000 pieces. So what I did is I saved a blueprint. I already saved it, but I'll kind of show you what I've done. Actually, no, I'll talk about that at the end because I want to kind of walk through what I've done first. Um, but I've saved that along with the five coasters as a blueprint and I took the screenshot from right here so then I'll be able to replace that um, once I'm ready to do that at the end. So a um, couple new things. Haven't haven't done anything new in this area. I still need to go back and kind of do lights and you know kind of do a lot of little things. Um, uh, do some little things and stuff like that. So yeah. But what, one thing I've done is I got this from a couple of people on, um, you know, Planko group that I'm part of. It's so like I saw the Magic Mike had done this and that um, I believe NH did this as well. But I decided, you know, why not make a little, a little kind of boardwalk type pier all the way around. And I'm going to place benches and stuff kind of all the way around along with bins. And I might actually do it above the water part too. Um, the only thing I don't like is when you elevate, um, when you have a thing that's elevated, it automatically has the curb. I wish that wasn't possible, um, so I don't know kind of what I would do there, but you, you see right there, kind of, to me that doesn't look the best, but I could probably put, place down something over that to kind of mask it and make it look better. Um, so if you have any ideas about what you could possibly place right here to make that look a little bit better, I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas. So you see all those trees in the background. <laughs> that looks kind of kind of cool, crazy and kind of cool. So yeah, I haven't done anything different here other than I believe this part was already added in last time I talked to you guys. Got a little food stall here. We've been over here to look. Um, haven't done anything new. Still haven't put lights in here. Um, I gotta build some kind of little vending machine area here, but I don't really like how this has turned out so far. As I need to put a roof on it. Um, so I'm gonna kind of come back to that. I just. I don't really like how that's turned out. Um, you know, I may end up putting nothing there if I really don't like how it looks. Um, but I showed you guys the station here before. Man, one thing I love doing, I love placing these, um, which by the way, if you can hear that meow in the background, my cat's going crazy for some reason. <laughs> um, actually, both my cats looks like they're, uh, yep, they're playing. Pretty funny. Um, one of them starts hissing at the other one a lot. But uh, yeah, so I like this. Um, you know, I like placing down these hazard strips. I think it looks really nice. I kind of added a little bit of this because, you know, I wanted to have the walkways and I put a little ladder there so that employees can kind of get up there. Um, you know, I added a little bit of, sorry, these cameras can get annoying sometimes, a little bit of realism here in the back with a couple trucks and stuff. Um, you know, I need to I need to move that one down on the ground. It's elevated a little bit, which is like, why can't they give us trucks with wheels? Why do we have to put the wheels on it ourselves? Honestly, that kind of that really bugs me. <laughs> is this a little bit harder than you think to try to get it perfect? Yeah. So, um, and I showed you this before. Oh yeah, I added this right here just so you can protect the, in theory, maintenance workers who are going up and down here throughout the day from any guests who might be thinking, hey, it's funny to throw something at them. Um, so I put a little bit of lights, and as you can see here, I showed this before, but I just did a brand new station um, so that if you kind of go in here, you got the look that there's another spare car if needed. And then this one, I put just a little bit of equipment, nothing too crazy. 
I'm not really going to go too crazy on the inside of this stuff just because like you can't visibly see it unless you go in the building. Um, and just to kind of preserve some pieces here and there. So now what's new is all this other area over here. And we'll ride each of these rides. Also, I've got like six or seven fly rides up there because those are ones I'm wanting to put in the park. Um, and one other thing before <laughs> that I noticed too, um, you know, I've got a couple of compliments on this stroller thing I did, which I think is really cool. But now this doesn't quite make as much sense in the park simply because I don't really have any kid rides. So <laughs> this is not really a theme park that you bring young kids and stuff like that. Um, but hey, I think it's still cool. It's a really good look. I love this glass building right here. I think that turned out well with the little sunroof. Um, but yeah, so I've got a couple of coasters over here. Well, this one, I don't know what I'm going to do yet with this station. I'm kind of stuck. I wanted to kind of try to theme something like temple, you know, like uh, have it be like a temple theme. But I just don't really... I don't know. I'm kind of stuck on that one right now because I got two more stations to create that I'm kind of stuck on and trying to think about. Um, I'll probably have chain link fence over this part as kind of like the little queue area. And my thought was either here or on an, some area over here, kind of like on my previous one, how I built out kind of this, um, this like coffee shop or something over the lake to do something similar. Um, yeah, so I've still got a ton of work to do, but I wanted to kind of get the basics done on a lot of this. So you can see with the pretzel loop kind of going under the ground there. So let's go ahead and test ride this ride, which I like how the pathing's turning out. Um, it's going to be really interactive, I feel like, with the ride. I feel like you get really close. I'll probably have the maintenance area inside on this ride just because of the track being above the, um, above the car. It's a little bit easier to do it that way. So probably have this kind of be a little maintenance area. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and test this ride. So now that I will say there's an inversion on this one that I think is probably pretty unrealistic, but either way, it's kind of, I kind of like it. Um, so I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. And the reason I do slower chain lifts is because you kind of get that a lot in real life. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think. Alright guys, so that's the ride. Like I said, I haven't come up with any names for any of these rides yet. If you have any good ideas for them, um, uh, that would be welcome because that's one of the things I'm worst at is creating the ride. Um, probably have to smooth it out just a little bit more, but I really kind of love this area how, like I don't know how realistic this is, but you kind of come down and then you're laying on your back for a little bit over here and then you kind of turn back over. So I think that's kind of cool. I kind of got the idea from watching a POV on Galactica a little bit because I know it doesn't do that exact move um, but it does like it does one of those where you do an inversion and then you're kind of on your back for a little bit right and then I did kind of a Jojo roll here um, so you know I think it's pretty good love to hear your guys thoughts and I probably will end up building one more coaster with the extra percentage in here um, you know, I realize I don't have a wooden coaster. That's like the only type of coaster I don't have in this park. Um, so I could do a smaller wooden one or RMC or something. Um, you know, but I'll figure something out. Um, 
or you know a Gerslauer coaster. So let's go to this one. Now, honestly, I did this uh, the other night because I was like, I have no idea what to do. And I was like, well, I'm going to keep the colors the same because I kind of like these colors for this ride. Let's do something crazy. Because sometimes I feel like with these hyper coasters or giga coasters, you see some um, pretty cool stations, um, like pretty unique. And so I decided to color everything the same. I just, and at the back, I kind of got the inspiration from Goliath, the Six Flags over uh, Georgia a little bit because they've kind of got metal um, stuff like this at the back and then at the front you don't really have much of that but you've got poles that are kind of yeah, that are the supports um, and so I thought that was really cool and so let me pause this because I believe there's a car going up the chain yeah so me personally I think this is one of the best coasters I've ever made if not the best um, I mean I feel like every time I make coasters I keep getting better at it so I think every coaster in this park for the most part is better in terms of smoothing and stuff than my previous park I made, which I thought that park was pretty good too. Um, but I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and your opinions. So before we go, let's look at the stats on this one real quick. So good numbers. Um, I had to have the chain be a little bit slower because of the block sections and how that would work out. Um, All right, so let's see, and then it says track length, 2,200 meters, max speed, 98, biggest drop, 99 meters, so over 300 feet. So that, that G-force area, that's a little bit higher. I tried to work that out, but it wasn't great at um, uh, at doing that. But that's just a little bit higher than it should be, but it's okay. Four airtime counts. It says two inversions. It really doesn't do inversions. It kind of counts those. You'll see the ones that counts as inversions. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and enjoy the ride. Right, so there it is um, thinking of calling it like I don't know some kind of like Titan type name I know there's a lot of coasters named Titan or something it's like Zeus or something I don't know but um all the only two things that are not custom on here are these ones and they consider those inversions I personally don't know why because um, I don't know if it I, it doesn't technically go upside down so I don't know why those are inversions but um you know, I really like this one right here. That took a little bit to smooth out, but it worked out really well. And then I really like this one. I think it worked out really well as, as well. And one thing I've try, been trying to work on as I create coasters is to have um, the shape of it. And so if you know what I'm talking about, like, you know, in theory, it might be a little bit steeper coming down, but you want the shape of your coaster to kind of look the same in terms of you don't want it to be an awkward looking hill, right? So as you can see there, it's going up and it goes down a little bit steeper, but it has a good kind of U-shape at the top. So it gives it enough, at least from my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong on this because I am far from a coaster expert, but it gives you enough time to have your body kind of get out of the air for air time, but also come back down. Um, and then, you know, this one's not too, not too steep going up and then not too steep coming down. So you want to kind of keep it very similar. I mean, even with the lift there, um, you know, I, this one is as steep as the ride will go at 65 degrees compared to the Invincible, which is like 
Um, I believe it's like 80 degrees or something. But yeah, so I'd love to hear your opinions on that ride. Like I said, I think that is the best ride I've made. I was, I love, like, especially after going to Six Flags the other day, I mean, I just love Airtime Hills. Um, those are, I enjoy those more than Inversions. Um, yeah, so this is the other coaster. It's inspired by the Hulk. Not not the Hulk, though, but I, I got I got the idea from, it's inspired by the Hulk. It's also inspired by a ride that, um, what's it, gosh, what's the name? Matt Lown made on his Velocity Lake series. If you guys have if watched that one, it's the red roller coaster, the launch coaster. Um, so it's, uh, it's, um, yeah, so that's where I got the inspiration from. And so let's look at these stats real quick. There's a, there's a couple of cool inversions that I did in here. Like I said, I don't know how realistic they are for real life, but I think they're pretty cool. Um, max speed, 78 miles per hour, average speed, 47, biggest drop, 42 meters. So it's not, um. It's not a real large one. Number of inversions, five. Airtime count, there's just one. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. so there it is um so the custom inversion is right here coming out of the immelman this other um kind of roll that kind of rolls you into this turn i really like how that one did and then doing this into the loop um that's custom as well and then yeah, i think that was it for, oh and then this one right here this one i think is really cool um it's not the exact same as the hulk right but you come and go to the right and then you go out, and then you still turn to the right. So I think that's really cool. The only problem with doing these sometimes is I can't really smooth it out any more than it is right now for these two. And the reason is um, it really messes with the... So, like, for example, let me click on this. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Because it really messes with the, the look of the track. So if you look right here, um, if I were to take, you know, doing four notches at a time and I were to smooth that out you see how it kind of it kind of changed that one now that one wasn't as bad um, but then if I were to do that again let's see it was a kind of because uh, I, was, I was trying to do this earlier and it was kind of messing messing it up um, yeah so that one and then now look it's not even an inversion right so it just kind of took it to a point where it went from being an inversion to not an inversion. Um, this one right here really gets messed up. Um, so I really can't smooth it out any more than it is. But yeah, so I really enjoyed that ride too. Um, what do you guys think? Would love to hear y'all's opinions out of the five that I have. Which one do you think is the best ride or your favorite? And now the only, the issue sometimes with doing the Oswald counter is you have to have all your major rides that you want to save done before you reach 100%. Because eventually what we're going to do is we're just going to reconnect them to the path. Um, and so that's why you see I've got some paths done, but I don't really have much other than that. Um, and so, yeah, another thing here doing this, some, for some reason if you zoom out it will kind of show some areas where the, um, uh, where the ground is kind of messed up underneath it. I don't know why it does that, but obviously that doesn't look good. So I'll try to see if I can figure that out or if anybody knows why it's doing that. I'd love to hear your your thoughts yeah so what I what I do now is I've already saved it but just kind of showing you I'm gonna select these right here and that is okay I don't know why I did 5,000 hold on oh I see why okay I accidentally selected the wrong thing so 4,001 piece right so now what I need to do is I need to actually 
delete one of these. So now I'm going to click on here. And I'm going to go back and click on these because I've got these grouped together. So that's exactly 4,000 pieces. I then go and do this with all the rides that I'm saving. So I've got three coasters um, here. Let's see. Four coasters and then five. So this fifth one. So now all that I can do, all that I would do is I would say save as blueprint and then you'd save the blueprint and I kind of took a picture like this and then you know essentially you would delete everything so now the park looks like this right well now what you do is you go into coasters and I've got this saved as a blueprint down here so then it's going to place it it doesn't automatically place it right there it looks like it's going to and then it kind of goes a different way so what I do but the cool thing is they have all the coasters facing the correct direction. Um, but what I do is I'll raise it up a little bit and then which direction? Yeah. And then, so I'll go back this way and I try my best to get it close to the station. It's like, I'll kind of look at that one that's closest to me and I'll say, okay, it's, it needs to be a little right a little bit more. And I mean, really this part doesn't matter, but then I place them. And now, so if I, and now, so once I would do that, I would then just replace everything. So once I really flush out this park more, as we can see with everything deleted there, that's 69%, so that's 31% left. Plus if I delete these uh, six flat rides right here, that deletes five more percent. So I have 36% left to work with in this park, which is massive compared to the fact of what I've been able to get in here with 100%, right? which means I can definitely do another coaster. I can do a lot of detail on stuff. Um, and so that's just kind of what I wanted to go over and show you and kind of show you my plan. And how I'm actually going to go about doing this is instead of deleting everything at once, because since I'm at right at 100% right now, since I've done everything I'm going to do with this coaster, I would delete this one first. So that gives me 6% to work with. So then I would continue working. Once I get back to 100% and it doesn't allow me to do anything, I would delete actually you know what I could delete first I could just delete the um, uh, before I actually delete the coaster I can just delete that scenery group and then I could delete this scenery group as well so that gives me nine percent to work with right and so forth um, so that's just kind of a strategy that I'm using um, I hope this video was helpful to some of you guys, and I really would love your feedback because I really appreciate hearing thoughts and opinions and you know what, what you think should go where and stuff like that. Um, and the reason why is I know somebody commented on the last video and said, you know, for the skyline of the park, you could do like a strata coaster, like a top thrill type. The only problem with that was I had just built this ride, and so I didn't really have a good area, I feel like, to put it. But I would love to do some sort of like smaller coaster here like a Gerschlauer or even a small wooden coaster like a small GCI or something in this space um, where I can actually kind of surround it with paths and different stuff um, so love your guys opinion what do you think should go here um, and what do you guys think about this park so far what's your favorite ride remember as always hit that like button hit the subscribe button I really appreciate everybody who watches the videos and gives feedback and everything um, really means a lot to, to my wife and I. And so I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.